Hey, this is Tony. I was thinking of something. When is the last time you heard a good old-fashioned sermon about the blood? Tony Broom Ministries now presents the following message entitled, Thank God for the Blood. Wednesday morning, you can agree with me that Wednesday morning is church like church ought to be. So we're going to be here, Lord willing, as long as he gives me the strength and breath. I asked him the other day, Lord, would you keep me alive for this, just for this? And it's like he said, yeah, I think I will. <laughs> I'm glad he did, too. It was good to be here. I told my wife she could kill me anytime she wanted to, but then she'd have to preach. <laughs> she must not like the idea that he kept me around. <laughs> we all have so much to be thankful for. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Life and what health we have and strength and the wisdom that he gives us, the protection that he provides for us every day as we get about. And there's so many people who are not looking out for themselves or for you either, and you have to watch out for you. You have to watch out for them. And it's amazing how God protects us every day. No wonder the Old Testament, maybe we didn't think about it much way back there, but he gives his angels charge over us and they encamp round about us to take care of us. We might have just read that and said, that's good to know that God gives his angels charge over us. But now in the day that we live with tanks and planes and vehicles and metal and all these explosives, we really better thank God for the angelic protection the mighty hosts of God and the chariots of God that surround us. Scripture talks about the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the mount where the Lord is in the holy mount of God. And God is there to protect us and he watches over us. The newer translations in some of the contemporary songs has it like the God of angel armies is on my side. Thank God. He is the God of angel armies. The King James says, Lord of hosts. He is a God of angel armies. Of all the things that we can thank God for His protection and His watchful eye over us, thank God for salvation. Thank God for sanctification. Thank God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for healing. So many times we've got that bad report. So many times that pain, we don't know where it came from. And then we call upon the Lord. And the first thing you know, He comes along and He touches us and makes us feel better. Thank God for that touch. Thank God for the comfort of God. In the midnight hour when nobody else understands, God is there to comfort us. And He gives us that word of encouragement that we need. We cannot even articulate it with our lips, but it's in our heart. The encouragement that God gives us, He provides that encouragement for us every day. One of the things that I thank God for, thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. The blood will never lose its power. In Hebrews chapter 9, verses 12 to 14, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. We're talking about the blood of redemption. We were hopeless, we were helpless, we were lost without God. We were alienated from Him. We were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of God without hope and without God in the world. But now we who were sometime far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Thank God for the blood of redemption. He bought us back from sin. He bought us back from slavery. He bought us back from corruption. We didn't deserve it. We didn't earn it. But thank God for the precious blood of the Lord Jesus. It's not by the blood of goats and calves like they did in the Old Testament. It's not the Old Testament sacrifice. They were good in their time. They looked forward to the time that we have now. They looked forward to the new covenant. But thank God that we don't have to worship under that old system where you had to bring a lamb to the temple or a bird or some kind of offering. We can worship and come nigh to God by the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. Thank God for the blood of redemption. 
salvation. Thank God that he has redeemed us by his precious blood. And it says here his own blood, not somebody else's blood. His own blood. God shed his own blood for us through his son, Jesus Christ. He has redeemed us by his own blood. And he entered in once into the holy place. It's not like the high priest had to go every year and those same things rehashing over and over those same sacrifices and the same remembrance of sin but he entered in once into the holy place and we can say once for all he has purchased our redemption thank God for the redeeming power of the blood of Jesus Christ praise God once and for all he entered in into the holy places with the blood not the blood of animals but the blood of his own dear son he entered in once into the holy place he came in there where nobody else could come he came where the high priest had to tread on fear when he came every year but Jesus rent that veil in two and he died on the cross and he shed his blood and God tore that veil in two and he shed his blood for us on the cross he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us this is not just no haphazard thing. It's not something that just took place and then went away, but this is a an eternal redemption. He has obtained that eternal redemption for us. If the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. God says that this blood does something that no other blood can do. This blood will not only cover up a sin, but it will take away sin. This blood will purge your conscience and it will wash your heart. This blood will purge you from dead works so you can serve the living God. It's not like the goat or like the bull, but it's the blood of Christ. There is no other blood like this. Thank God for the blood of Christ. He, through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God. We're talking about the spotless Lamb of God. And no wonder John could say, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ that makes the vilest sinner clean. He can purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. We're talking about the blood of forgiveness. He will forgive your sins and write your name in the Lamb's book of life. You don't have to go through life full of guilt, full of shame, full of the stains of sin and corruption. You can be forgiven. And the scripture says that the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. It keeps on cleansing us. We have fellowship one with another and we walk in the light as He is in the light and we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin we confess our sin to God and he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness you say well I've messed up before how can I just confess it to God and be forgiven again it's because of the power of the blood of Jesus Christ his blood has power to forgive you more than one time his blood has power to cleanse you again and again. His blood has power to keep on cleansing us from sin. And in Romans chapter 5 verse 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We have the promise that the blood of Jesus Christ is so powerful it will forgive your sins. It will do away with your sins. And it will give you a promise of being saved from the wrath of God. You don't have to go through the wrath of God. Why? Because you've had the blood applied to your life. And there's no one living for God who has the blood applied to their life who has to worry about going through the tribulation period. How in the world can you go through the tribulation period when you've got the blood of Jesus Christ all over your soul covering your life up? And there's no way you will have to worry about going through the tribulation period when the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed you from all sin. Thank God we are 
now justified by his blood. We're not waiting for pie, pie, by and by in the sky when you die. We're already justified. We already have eternal life. And now being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, Colossians 1 14 tells us. Thank God for the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. You say, well, I know I'm forgiven, but I can't forgive myself. If you really know you're forgiven, you don't have to worry about forgiving yourself because he's already forgiven you. If you could forgive yourself, you would need him to forgive you. But the very reason that he has forgiven you proves you don't have to forgive yourself. All you have to do is to trust the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ and know that his blood cleanses you from all sin. Hebrews 9, 22 and 24. Almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Under the law, they put blood on everything. They put, put it on the book. They put it on the altar. They put it on the temple furniture. They put it on the candlestick. And they put it on the altar. They put it on the corners of the Ark of the Covenant. They put it on the cherubim there, the mercy seat. They put blood on everything. He even sprinkled the people with his blood. And Moses said, this is the blood of the covenant that God has enjoined to you. But now we have a better covenant. We have the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ. It not only covers up sin, but it takes away. It remits sin. It takes your sin away. For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. We're talking about the blood of remission and intercession. The blood of remission says, not only are my sins accounted for, but my sins are glory be to God. They're done away with. You cannot go back and find them. I don't care if you dig with a steam shovel. I don't care if you dig with a motor grader. You cannot go back and find my sins because they're gone, glory to God. My sins are gone. You ask me how I know because I know my sins are gone. Thank God my sins are remitted and they're done away with. They're eradicated. They're erased. They're done away with by the blood of Jesus Christ. You say, well, people are judging me for my past. They don't have anything to go on. There's nothing back there. Everything is gone. It's all void. It's all done away with. If you believe in Jesus Christ and you trust the power of the blood of Christ to forgive you of all sin, then you don't have anything to worry about because His blood has forgiven you of all of your sins. His blood has remitted your sins. And the blood stands there as an intercession. He is there in the presence of God now to make intercession for us. And when he comes before God, God sees the power of the blood. He sees the power of the blood that's applied in the holy place in heaven. There on the altar the blood of Jesus Christ is forever stamped as our redemption. And Jesus Christ has shed his blood and he intercedes to the Father on our behalf. We have a show enough high priest in the presence of God that's there intercession seating for us. Hebrews 10 19, having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God let us and I'm buying lettuce today not cabbage but let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water we're talking about the blood of access and assurance I have access to the father you have access to the son you have access in the Holy Ghost. It's not through the Pope. There's no hope in the Pope. It's not through Mary. It's not through Mary Harry. It's not through Jerry. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. You have access to the God in heaven. You can talk to him in the day. You can talk to him at night. Call him day at night. And the song said, he's my 911. Call him day at night. Thank God when you're in trouble, all you got to do is just pick up that royal telephone. 
and dial into the number. The number is J-E-S-U-S. -S. The number is H-E-A-V-E-N. It's the throne of God. You have access to the throne of God. We have boldness to enter into the holy place. They could not do it in the Old Testament. You would be smitten and die. And the high priest even took a chance when he entered into the temple. But thank God because the veil is rent in two and the blood of Jesus Christ stands for our access and our intercession. Thank God we have access to the Father. And the blood of Jesus Christ stands on our behalf. We have boldness to enter into the holy place, not made with hands, but into heaven itself. We have access to the throne of God. And the song said, Take me to the King. Lead me at the throne. Leave me there alone. I have access to the King. Praise God. If you want to see a president, you try to get in up there and see him. See how much attention they'll pay to a poor boy like you and me. They won't pay you any mind, but I'm telling you, I have serve a king today. I have a high priest today who's in heaven, and we can come before him anytime we need to. He's never too busy to hear from you. He's never too busy. He don't put you off. You don't have to make an appointment with him at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. You can go to him anytime you want to. And it's almost like he stops the whole wide world. Said, I got a son. I got a daughter down there that's calling on my name. I need to be listening to them. And he just shuts everything else out. I don't know how he does it. He's God. He just shuts it all out. And you're in his presence right there by yourself. You have access to God. You have assurance we can know that as we enter into that place where he is we have a high priest over the house of God and we can enter in boldly into the holy place not made with hands but into heaven itself we can draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith I have faith to know that he hears my prayers I have faith to know that he's going to make everything alright I have my heart sprinkled from an evil conscience you don't have to have that conscience eating you alive all the time. You can have your heart sprinkled from an evil conscience. How is it sprinkled? It's sprinkled by the blood of Jesus Christ. It even washes your body. Your body is washed with the pure water of the Word of God. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12, it says, and then verse 20 and 21, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. He went outside the gate of Jerusalem, and there he died on a cruel, rugged cross. He shed his blood down to the ground, sanctifying the very earth. And But that's not the reason that he shed it. He didn't shed it to sanctify the earth. He shed it to sanctify the people on the earth. And he wants you to be sanctified. And he wants me to be sanctified. We're talking about the blood of sanctification. The blood will sanctify you. The blood of the power of the Holy Ghost will sanctify you today. It will set you apart and it will give you a holy heart. He suffered without the gate that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleased pleasing through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We're talking about the blood of resurrection and perfection. The blood. Thank God for the blood. You know what the blood did? Not only was the blood shed on the cross but it said that God who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Yes, he shed his blood and he died on the cross, but that blood lives in heaven. And because of the power of the blood and the power of the Holy Ghost, God reached in that grave on the third day, that first Easter Sunday morning, and he said, get up, boy, we got some work to do. And the blood of Jesus Christ, the power of the resurrection, that's why people can be healed. That's why people can be saved and sanctified and baptized in the Holy Ghost is because of the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, because of the power of the blood of the resurrection, because of the power of the blood to make you perfect. None of us are sinlessly perfect, but you can have a perfection or a relationship with God. And he said he will make you perfect, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. You can please God today, not in yourself, but because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we can please him. We can 
serve Him. We can live for Him. We can work for Him. We can do what He wants us to do because of the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. It will reach our sons. It will reach our daughters. It will reach men and women and boys and girls. We think the church has lost its power. The church may lose its power, but the blood of Jesus Christ will never lose its power. Praise God. The blood of Jesus Christ still saves. The blood of Jesus Christ still heals. The blood of Jesus Christ still sanctifies. And it's the blood of Jesus Christ that gives you right to resurrection and perfection. It's because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ that makes the vilest sinner clean. I have no right to stand in myself before God, but I can come and do the old-fashioned Holy Ghost shuffle because I can come into the presence of God. Praise God. He makes me want to do the mashed potato. Hey, I can come into the presence of God. Hallelujah. He makes you want to do the watch you see because I can come into the presence of God. He fills your heart with joy and He gives you a song in your heart because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God the old time religion still works. The power of the Holy Ghost, the full gospel still works. God still baptizes in the Holy Ghost. It's because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for the blood. The blood, the blood will never lose its power. And I plead the blood today over this county, this sin-filled, cursed, wretched county. There's so much opioids and so much drugs and sex and violence and dr all this gun slinging and things that are going on. The hatred that's going on. They care more about impeaching a president than they do setting up righteousness and making righteous laws that will bring a nation back to God. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over America. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over Washington. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over the church of the living God. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every pastor, every preacher that's done got cold and indifferent and don't know how to preach anymore. Done forgot about the power of the Holy Ghost and cares more about money and about woman than he does about preaching the Word of God. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every deacon. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every elder. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every member, every one that's in the body of Christ. I plead the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over that one that's confused, over that one that's doubt, over that one that's down and out, over that one that's a derelict, over that one that's homeless. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. He will set you up on a high place. He will give you a better life. He'll give you a new home if you need it. He'll give you a new car if you need it. But that's not what's all important. The important thing is if you have the blood applied to your life. That's the only thing that's going to get you from earth to glory is you have to have the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your life. It's not joining a church. It's not shaking a preacher's hand. It's not signing a card. It's not giving money to charity. It's not any of that. You have to have the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your heart. You cannot say, I love God, but I hate Jesus. No, you can't hate Jesus. He shed his blood for you. You might hate him now, but you better love him today and love him tomorrow because he shed his blood that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. Oh, hallelujah. Let's stand up. We're going to pray. Most time you wait for me to pray. We're going to all pray. Let's pray and let's plead the blood. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise, Lord. Right now, we plead the blood. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every sick person. Disease, you have to go in Jesus' name. Not because I say so in myself, but because of the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus' blood is more powerful than cancer. It's more powerful than heart disease. It's more powerful than crippleness. It's more powerful than blindness. It's more powerful than oppression and depression. The blood of Jesus Christ is more powerful than drugs. It's more powerful than alcohol. More powerful than sex addiction. The blood of Jesus Christ is more powerful than all evil. The blood of Jesus Christ is more powerful than political corruption. The blood of Jesus Christ is more powerful than all the evil in the world. The blood of Jesus Christ is more powerful than every devil who's going to hell. And Satan himself has no match against the blood of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood against every lost soul for every lost soul upon every lost soul. Our children, our sons and our daughters, our grandchildren that seem so confused and get so swallowed up in this world. I plead the blood of Jesus 
Jesus Christ. The power of the blood of Jesus Christ and the full gospel will reach them by the power of the word of God. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ today and we pray that you would seal this word with your blood in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You have been listening to the old time preaching from God's Word. The title has been, Thank God for the Blood. Make sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior and you know Him as your Lord today. That way you will have the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your life forever. This has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries.